Hey everybody, I wanted to do a quick little video on bobbin size comparison. I have been uh, talking with a lot of folks on email or on Messenger about a uh, very great topic on <laughs> which spindolution wheel is the one that I should get. And then because there are so many different flyer head sizes and bobbin options, you know, you can uh, drive yourself crazy on that forever. So <laughs> since that was something I've been talking to people about, I figured I should probably make a video about it. And um, I also will show you my favorite size here on the wheel that I'm currently working with. But I guess, drum roll please, my favorite size for me personally, this is not my favorite size for everybody who spins, but for uh, me personally and the way I spin, I really like the 8 ounce bobbin. And this one is the uh, 3D printed honeycomb bobbin from uh, Spin Perfect, but it goes on my King Bee because it's a King Bee, so I had to have the honeycomb bobbins because I'm a dork and it makes me laugh. I also really like the, uh, I like the 3D printed bobbins, one, because they're cute, and two, because they're really lightweight and they hold a little bit more. So more on that in a second. But I really like, for me, and my yarn that I normally spin is, uh, God, I tend towards bulkier yarn. I'm not like big giant. I'm spinning an entire fleece in like to weave tapestries. Uh, I know Ashley Martineau does do that <laughs> and she makes beautiful yarn. So like I am not, uh, I, I love stuff like that. I love all the weavings. I'm actually just moved a bunch of pictures around upstairs and I want to uh, get some big like the chunky yarn weavings to go, uh, you know, on my walls in my studio. And though y'all always just see my living room, but I normally spin, I guess, a traditional more, I'd say sport weight to bulky is kind of my range. Just because I'm a knitter. I'm not a weaver. I'm not cool. I'm not making tapestries. I'm like knitting stuff. So <laughs> for me, that's what I like to, uh, to work with. And that just tends to be everybody when you're spinning, you kind of get like your default yarn. That tends to be mine. So if I'm spinning singles, I kind of shoot for one. I may do them thinner if I'm trying to, if I'm gonna like two ply it or chain ply it just so it doesn't get crazy big. But for me, the eight ounce bobbin is great because it doesn't, it's not so big and heavy that it gets like way too much momentum behind it and it's not clunky. Um, but it also, I can easily spin while watching TV and I'm not worried about you know, like, oh, am I gonna get it all on there? So to me, the eight ounce bobbin, for that type of spinning is the perfect like Goldilocks bobbin of it's not too big, it's not too small. So that's my favorite. And um, speaking of big and small, hold on, I gotta <laughs> dig it out from under Jolene here. Um, we have kind of, and of course Spinolution does, you can get like a 32 ounce bobbin, you can get all the way up to a 64 ounce bobbin, which I have personally never laid eyes on. The biggest bobbin that I have for any of my wheels, so this would be on, this is the 16 ounce and uh, it is on my Echo. I got my Echo. I don't have multiple heads because I already have lots of wheels. So I didn't need multiple heads. My Echo just is 16 ounce and then my Bullfrog has three 16 ounce bobbins. So that's what I use this guy for. And you can see the size comparison difference in the 16 ounce versus the uh, eight ounce. So, I mean, it's considerably, I mean, this always makes me think, <laughs> it looks like one of those funny, uh, like, cartoon character dumbbells, but it's, like, not heavy at all. But, uh, you know, that's what it looks like to me. But definitely, so you got 8 ounce versus 16 ounce. And so these are great if you are wanting to spin, um, you're like, I want to spin a whole sweater's worth of yarn all on one big giant skein, which would be awesome because then you didn't have all the ends to weave in. You know, you could just do one big giant shawl and, and not have any ends. So, I mean, I have never personally done it because I'm a little too uh, spacey to pay attention to one thing for that long. But I mean, if you filled this booger up, I mean, that would be, that'd be a lot of yarn. You can see the yarn that was currently on here is just kind of a traditional, like maybe worsted. So yeah, I mean, if you had that size, that much yarn of that size yarn on this bobbin, I mean, that'd be a whole bunch. I don't even, 
have any clue how much yardage that would be. Or, or you could spin, this would be great for, like I was mentioning, my, um, like if you were doing the weavings or that you're really into cool tapestries and you're like, I want to spin locks for days and beehives the size of my arm and, you know, all that thing, then this would also accommodate that because with the open hook orifice, I like my hook here on the uh, on the wheels allows for that larger yarn to slip through or the art yarn like the locks to slip through and then the big bobbin will then accommodate the um, the size for uh, you know big yarn so that would be what I would recommend if you are a weaver a tapestry person a macrame person we just got a cool blog on macrame, so click on back in the videos because um, I'm learning about that. You just want to spend giant yardage. The 16 ounce bobbin, from what I am told, is our best selling bobbin size just because it is very versatile. And we do have another video where it shows that you can spin lace weight yarn uh, with the Golden Whirl because it goes so fast on a big bobbin. So I would say that this would be a very versatile bobbin. So if somebody was going to buy a wheel and they were like, just going to have one size and they were totally just like, I want to do all the yarn. Like I would recommend, that's where I would be like, get a bullfrog, get a echo with a 16 ounce head. That's probably what I would recommend. If you were just like, Aaron, I want to spin anything my heart desires and I'm just going to have one. Like, I'm just going to have one head. I would definitely say get the 16-ounce bobbin because uh, with the Golden World technology, it's still, even with this being bigger, the flyer head can spin so quickly and so smoothly that you can spin lace weight yarn, and then you've still got this giant bobbin that you could also spin big chunky yarn or just like a million miles worth of lace weight yarn on here. <laughs> so that would be your most versatile. So if you were like... I'm getting into spinning. I absolutely adore it. I want like the the wheel that will do all the things and not really like specialize in niches one way or the other. Then get you a, uh, like I said, I would say bullfrog mm -hmm. if you want something that folds um, or the Echo, uh, which is I think the best selling wheel with the best selling size. <laughs> And to get an echo with the 16 ounce or bullfrog if you uh just wanted like the one wheel to spin them all I'm sorry another lord of the rings reference uh then get a 16 ounce and let me get my other one okay also my other uh bobbin options that i have laying around my house are four ounce and you can see these little guys and this is a four ounce, um, just the standard regular wooden one that comes, you would get three of these on the polywog and it's very cute. And this is the aftermarket, like spin perfect, another example of one of the 3D printed ones. You could technically get it in the honeycomb currently and they're always coming out with new stuff. But this is like the classic black spokes, which I mean, I like black, it goes with everything, so. I'm a big fan of this design. And one thing to be noted between these two that I pointed out to a lot of people here lately is see how much thinner the 3D printed one is versus this guy down here at the bottom. Also, and hold on, this yarn is being not where you want it to be. You can see that this one does taper up, whereas this one just due to holding it together, and I am no engineer, but you, you can use your eyeballs and see that those are different. So this one is going to hold slightly more yardage than this one. And the reason that, because I have already asked, no, you cannot order your wheel at this time with requested 3D printed bobbins versus wooden. And the reason for that is uh, that these, they wanted whatever bobbins, but since we put so much effort into our wheels, like they last and they have this good warranty. Um, these, I mean, these are plastic. So, I mean, they're cool, they're great, I love them. I definitely recommend buying yourself, I'd say at least one, but you want with your spinning wheel that you love and you want to keep forever and, uh, you know, do all the things with, you want something sturdy. And I mean, this is, wood and it's going to hold up a lot better. So that's why the wheels come with, there is no option at the point that I'm making this video that I'm aware of anyway, and I have asked 
to order it with the 3D printed bobbins because they want you to get the bobbins that are solid and wood and will uh, last you. Whereas the 3D printed ones are more of like a, uh, you know, like fun add on to soup up your wheel. But that being said, anybody that contacts me, and this was totally me when I got a polywog because you're like, oh my God, spinning wheels are so expensive. Why are spinning wheels so expensive? So the polywog is obviously a very popular choice because it is small, it fits everywhere, and it is the less expensive wheel. Um, and the polywog comes standard with three of these guys, which are great. And so when these are called the four ounce bobbin and while they will fit four ounces i'm just gonna be honest with you the last little bit of the four ounce you're gonna really have to and i have a whole video on it so go watch it you're, you will have to change your pegs fairly often and possibly adjust your tension a few times to really load a full four ounces especially if you're spinning more like bulky or worsted on here i mean this little guy I mean, it gets four ounces. It's very cute. When you get four ounces on this thing, it is like solid, like all the way down. And so the idea with the changing the pegs is that you're really tightly wrapping your yarn onto this bobbin so that you have as much of it on there as you can. So for me, in enjoying my spinning, if I had a polywog with just these three and I bought a standard four ounce braid uh shout out the crafty housewife yarns braid of the month club so like if you subscribe to that <laughs> you got one of our wonderful braids which are four ounces um the way i would most likely spin on one of these would be maybe two ounce on one side two ounce on another side and then ply them together or just do two smaller skeins uh, you know, like split the braid in two and do half on one and half on another, which there's absolutely no reason not to do that. That is a perfectly great way to spin. But there is definitely, so between the four ounce and the eight ounce, I mean, there's a lot, the eight ounce is much bigger. So that brings me to why the eight ounce is my favorite, personally, because it is, I'm not ever, for my spinning, I can be pretty brainless about it and I'm not ever having to like really worry about like, oh, am I going to get it all on there? Whereas with this one, you might want to split the braid. That being said, if you're spinning really thin and the polywog, the benefit of these being so little and the reason they are so little is because they're so light, like crazy light, even crazier lighter. And so if you are spinning, which not necessarily me, but if you are one of those people that just loves spinning, as my dad would say, something as fine as frog hair. So, there you go, dad. But uh, if you're spinning fine as frog hair and you want, want it to, you could fit a lot on one of these little four ounces. And it being so light it, that you can really get just crazy fast rotations to spin super duper fast. So, I think of the little four ounce bobbins as being primarily designed for spinning thinner yarns, which is great if you're wanting to spin like crazy thin singles. My friend Jessica spins like crazy thin singles and then plies them. Like her like three ply yarn still comes out like thinner than my like one ply yarn. I don't get it. <laughs> so if you're one of those people, then you can get a whole bunch on one of these guys and they're great. So I'm not talking bad about the four ounce bobbins. If you would like a little bit more versatility and you're looking at a polywog, they come with three of these, which are great. I would say order at least one. Just get yourself one of these and think of it as your plying bobbin. And then that way you can spin two singles on two of these and have plenty of room and will have no problem at all. And then you can ply it onto this with a little bit more extra room and your life will be happier. So you're welcome. So that would be my recommendations with the polywogs. Four ounce bobbins, amazing for thinner yarns or just not as much yardage per uh, bobbin, but amazingly fun to spin on. So if you're like, but Aaron, why would anybody want the little ones versus the big ones? While I did just tell you that uh, the big one, this would be like the Goldilocks of all the bobbins that's, you know, you could do all the things on. No, I said that about the eight ounce. I'm sorry. This would be the one that if you just wanted to do all the things and not worry about it, that is indeed true. So you're like, why would I ever want one of these? These are so light and they're so fun to ply. This is a bit heavier. And so the stop start 
on the 16 ounce, or I could even imagine the bigger ones, there's much more just momentum behind them. I mean, not that that's a bad thing, it's more powerful, but there's definitely more weight and momentum behind one of these bobbins being spun. Whereas this one, <laughs> my biggest problem on spinning on the Polywog is I have too much fun and I go too fast. So if you're looking for a really fun, super fun wheel to get into. I really enjoy uh, the four ounce bobbins for the Polywog, but I will stand by my original statement that if you just want one size that you could do anything from really fine to really big, then the 16 ounce is probably what you want. And just because nobody wants an entire video of just me running my mouth, here is my uh, favorite size bobbin my eight ounce bobbin on my King B, which is probably, if I had to just keep one spinning wheel, would probably be my favorite uh, bobbin size on my favorite wheel. That being said, uh, I love all my other wheels uh, very, very close. It's a close race, but this is my favorite bobbin size and it is on the King B is the eight ounce, the Queen B is the four ounce, and the 16 ounce is the Worker B, which, uh, you know, would be the most versatile, whereas the Queen B has the most gears. And so if you're really into gears and you're really into uh, fast speeds, then the Queen B would be what you want. And if you are like me and just kind of spin right down the middle of the road and you really like an eight ounce bobbin, then uh, I love my King B not too big, not too small. That being said, I have spun on worker bees and I've sold more worker bees than I have of the king bee. So I think that I might be in the, uh, in the minority here where the worker bee definitely seems to be making the most people happy. I have sold a whole bunch of them and everybody I know that has one is borderline obsessive with it. So I will not be discrediting the worker bee at all. So I hope you enjoyed my uh, bobbin comparison video. And if you have any questions, I'm more than happy to talk to you about them. Uh, please email me. Um, and if you would like more information on spinning, I guess I should start doing my uh, little announcement of our Patreon account has our entire dream yarn course with everything you could want to know about getting going with spinning. And all the proceeds go to keeping the My Local Wool website staffed and online. So please go check that out if you enjoy my videos. And if you have any bobbin questions or wheel questions or, you know, any other questions, let me know.